Hey guys, we're finally on X, so smash that follow button at Cartier Family, eating with the Z, for your daily dose of content. From video clips to exclusive behind the scenes stuff that we can't even post on YouTube. We'll be posting about politics, just random viral funny stuff, and sports, you name it. The Juneteenth flag raising event downtown today as Mayor Johnson announcing plans for a reparations task force. That group will study how policies have harmed black Chicagoans in the past and present and make a number of recommendations for remedies. Spare Shot says the latest on how Mayor Johnson wants to provide a remedy for the descendants of slavery and Jim Crow era oppression. Paris? Yeah, Terrence and Sylvia, Chicago would become the second largest U.S. city after Los Angeles to study reparations for black residents. And Johnson's executive order begins with an apology on behalf of the city for the historical wrongs committed to black Chicagoans and their ancestors. They didn't have slavery in Illinois. Just let it ride, bro. Let it ride. Yeah. But did he just say that Chicago is one of the most cities that are fighting for reparations? Yeah. yeah. But did everything that most cities with the most crime, too? Yeah. The most problems too. It's also, if you it's look also, at it's also like the, the cities with the, who are city. looking at the revolution, number two. They also had the most problems. It's like a direct correlation. L. A. We see how that. Paris, is. Chicago, we see how. Hey, hey. Wait, so y'all not raising y'all kids, right? And then y'all want reparations. Y'all want blame. Well, they're not else. raising them right because they don't got no money, bro. All right. Yeah. Hold on. on. This will also mess <laughs> me up. What's up with everybody taking down the American flag and hold putting on, down another flag? This is uh, somebody. The Juneteenth flag raising event downtown today as Mayor Johnson announcing plans for a reparations task force. That group will study how policies have harmed black Chicagoans in the past and present and make a number of recommendations for remedies. Spare Shot says the latest on how Mayor Johnson wants to provide a remedy for the descendants of slavery and Jim Crow era oppression. Paris? Yeah, Terrence and Sylvia, Chicago would become the second largest U.S. city after Los Angeles to study reparations for black residents. And Johnson's executive order begins with an apology on behalf of the city for the historical wrongs committed to black Chicagoans and their ancestors. Reparations will be an investment in our neighborhoods and our people. Reparations so will unlock more Glock switches. the doors for prosperity to fully flow through the neighborhoods that have been disinvested in for decades. And as we grapple with the challenges and the hard fought victories to get to this point, we must never forget our goal to make sure that reparations become a reality for black residents of this city. So this executive order creates a reparations task force that will create a definition and framework for reparations, identify areas for restorative action like in housing, jobs, education, criminal justice. It'll conduct a comprehensive study of the harmful policies that have contributed to segregation and poverty in Chicago. So think about things like housing discrimination, redlining, and the construction of interstates that divided neighborhoods, etc. And finally, it will make recommendations to the mayor and city council for action. The mayor has pledged half a million dollars for this effort in the current city budget. No word on whether the study will come up with a funding source to provide resources for reparations. 38th Ward Alderman Nick Spazzato acknowledges the evils of slavery, but says he believes this task force is questionable. Huh, well, okay, uh, I believe that, you know, maybe if he wants to go in the hood and try to rebuild the hood up with, you know, some money, I think that's cool. But uh, the, money the is thing the, is, the, money isn't the, problem. the thing is, you know, handing the money mm -hmm. to me is the problem. But the thing is to me is that if these niggas is going to keep the hood or wherever they at I don't under think, control. I don't think giving people in the hood money is going to fix the, anything. You, you can't give it to him, but that's what I'm saying. He didn't say give it to him. He said help him with education, help build up the community. Okay, exactly. well, why do you got to call it reparations? That's probably going to just turn people well, off to it. You could give it a different name, like yeah, they shouldn't we're gonna reinvest into these neighborhoods they just make or it like sound sweet, different opportunity. But when you call it reparations, people are gonna yeah. be adverse. Yeah, to it that. seems like another out. group did, you know. It seems like you're gonna just be giving money to black people. Remember you know? what they said at the because it's like it's like this money not coming from the actual slave owner. <laughs> this money only one percent of America owns slaves. Yeah, that's why it's a problem, you know. But he should have just called it a rebuild of the community. But is these niggas gonna keep but the community built? How they got the funding the to do this if they still got a problem with the immigrants out there with no resources, no money, and you're asking for money, and you're now you're trying to tell people that you're finna give them reparations? That don't make sense. Yeah. The immigrants, in, they finna be in the hood too, so now we got black people and immigrants in it. They be gonna get towed down real quick. Yeah, they trying to you destroy I mean? They just trying to destroy these great cities and states, bro. That's sad. I, it's the people in the community that keeps the community. I don't know, guys. I think Chicago is a lot better off than we think. They highlight 
highlight the negative part, but that's like probably like a small percentage of what's really going on. Chicago's massive. Yeah, no, no, no. Have no, you been to the South Side? Like, what is it'll it? I'll show you the South Side, bro. Second biggest city in America. But it'll be a south. rare day that nobody gets shot in Chicago. Oh, for sure. Like the what, the bad parts are bad, but like no, bro. Do I that's think what that's, about. Do I think that's like the reality of what Chicago is like? No, I'm gonna keep it a hundred. I'm gonna keep it a hundred. My granddaddy was from Chicago. A lot of that motherfucker is messed up. The hood, the hood. South Side, the West Side, and East Side, fucked up. Is it the hood? Damn near, okay. yeah. Okay, do niggas let that? Do niggas let that? That's a stack. I mean, nigga, they, 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 we ain't got to look up who many amount of people getting shot, bro. No, 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 no. I mean, it was it was like, like, there was like one weekend that like, like only like 40 shot. people got shot. They were like, only 40 people got shot this weekend. Nice. They got Glock switches. There's videos you of know, kids at school with switches. If y'all know what a switch is, I'm, I'm not a. I can't. I'd be. I'd be a hater to say I'm opposed to building up the community. No, no, you know? no. They should, but just the way you do it, you have to like. The first problem we have to address here is the culture. We got to change the culture. Yeah, but and that's starts with education. Money though. Into, it starts with education. So maybe so, if like uh, the dude we met at the Start event. At the dude we met at the event. He goes around. So this is how. How you gonna say Republicans are racist? There's a guy. We met him. He pays poor kids to read. That is, yes, we met him. We talked to him. We got to connect with him. He also, people who are in jail, he automatically, he sets it up to like help them to where they get out of jail. You have a job. You have a career. Like the day you get out. That is how you change. white guy? Black dude. Black guy. He's oh, that's but that is how you change. That to me is how you change the culture. Shout out that guy. I forgot his wow. name. But I'll, I'm going to keep it 100. In Chicago, it's so much like... It's so many people long. died behind it. So some people want to get back in blood. And it's like... It's not gonna really stop until a lot of people are dead. Oh yeah, it's it's over. So that that's that's really what the problem is in that city. It's like because you killed my cuz, I feel like I gotta get you because you killed my cuz. And so if somebody so killed you. Not not even cousin. Cousin. When Brandon Johnson go down the old block and try to build old block into a good apartment. It, should he do that? Yes, I feel like he still should do that, but I feel like it's still gonna still have problem, like underlying problems that's still gonna happen in that community still. Yeah, I just. The, the, just don't litter in these like, the community. Like, really think about it. Bloods are on people's hands, and everybody want to get get back. But I ain't gonna lie, littering is. I'm, I'm not gonna say just black people litter, but that's a little part of the culture. Cause I got littering from somebody else that I know. Well, and I think that's a minor. That's a minor part of the problem. The problem Jeez. is littering is pretty bad. I think the biggest America. problem in Chicago is the violence. My, yeah. parents, my parents used to get so mad at me. I remember one the first time I ever littered, I threw something out the window. And my oh. parents pulled over and made me go pick yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. See, that's, 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 a that's, culture. that's culture. That's culture. That's a great lesson. Exactly. That's culture. They was, we don't they, do that. They, 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 they were so mad. I was like, damn, like it's really not that big a deal. But I, but I said he don't. Brandon Johnson. Now I get agitated when I see people throw stuff on the ground. He trying to be a black activist and shit. Chicago still bears the scars of systemic racism and injustices that have been inflicted on our communities. We've seen them in highways that cut through black neighborhoods and the industries, of course, that flock to these neighborhoods, often contributing to increased pollution and poor health outcomes. We see it in the trauma, of course, that is caused by gun violence. But we also saw it gun firsthand violence. with the gross disinvestment that, that was intentional by previous administrations. And so beautiful neighborhoods like mine, the Austin neighborhood, has seen many health disparities, the lack of nutritious food, the lack of employment opportunity, the disinvestment in our communities have been intentional. And of course, that's man. why it's imperative that it is now the time to deliver good on reparations for people of Chicago, and particularly black people of the city of Chicago. Because even as I stand here today as mayor, the legacy of slavery and the aftermath still echoes today. We saw it when previous administrations sold off public assets. We saw the harm when previous administrations closed black schools and they shut down public housing. When they raided the pensions, these anti-black, anti-business endeavors that have caused tremendous harm and pain. But it's a new day. In fact, we are standing on the shoulders of one of the great leaders of this city, Dorothy Tillman, who laid the foundation and the groundwork to ignite a movement for reparations. It was Dorothy Tillman that introduced me to Dr. Claude Anderson, Black Labor, White Wealth. And it is why my administration is committed to driving reparations home. And we're going to invest to a half a million dollars into the study of restoration and reparations for the city of Chicago so that we can begin to move in the direction of complete liberation. 
And that's why, with the help and the support of the Black Caucus, we have a brand new office of reentry, added $5 million to make sure that the formerly incarcerated find jobs and housing and counseling and the full support that they need. He's saying this, but you're the main man advocating for it illegals to come in your your city and then you gonna stuff them in the neighborhood for these the, black people. I ain't gonna the main man. He I asked to be a sanctuary city. It's his asked. fault. I don't, I don't he know. decided to be a sanctuary oh, city. I got a question though. Aren't guns illegal in Illinois? Like, uh, handguns, strict, I think. Extremely yeah, strict. it's straight. I can't believe that. So you want me to go out there with these animals with no with no guns? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> they got Glock switches they running around with. And you tell me I can't? Boy, and you want me to live that? That's a great city? That city not great. I mean, it just seems like I remember great. Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate tweeted, you can live anywhere in the world and you chose to live in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Chicago, Chicago, nice Chicago is a nice city. Chicago is, on, Chicago is extremely I nice. Got people, I they got too many animals running around. Okay, but in the hood. <laughs> I know people that say Chicago is one of the nicest cities they have ever been to. No, like, facts. Oh, yeah, I, nice personally, I personally, oh, yeah. I want to get a map in uh, one of them GPSs and it's got like the red area and that's the hood so I don't go there. No, I don't want to be, I don't want to be you know, sorry, Chicago. If you 250 there, feet of the I'm not hood. going out there. I'm not. I'm sorry. If I, I can't protect myself and you want me to live around these people that I've seen videos of kids in Chicago with school. I wish we could pull up the clip. In, in school, the bathroom, they were showing off their switches. Bro. There's no hope for those And you want me to be a, and then I, I just won't. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, there's no hope for them. I got, I got cousins out there. So there's you know. no hope for them. I'm used to being out I there. I remember my friend, I had a frat brother from Chicago. White people racist. They don't want to be around us. I wonder the fuck I mean, why, nigga, dumbass. Like they live in an open air prison or something. I wonder the fuck why, buddy. He said, where I'm from, we just don't fraternize with the white people. And you always out here fraternize with the white people. I'm like, nigga, we in Kansas. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Chicago's suburb is facing a lawsuit for paying out reparations to its <laughs> black residents. Evanston, Illinois became the first municipality in the U.S. to launch a government-funded reparations program. But a conservative group has filed a class action lawsuit claiming the program discriminates against non-black residents. For more on this, let's bring in Emmanuel Felton. He's a race and ethnicity reporter for the Washington Post who has been covering this story. What are the grounds for this lawsuit? <laughs> yeah, so the conservative group Judicial Watch argues that this, this program discriminates against non-black residents of Evanston. So under Evanston's reparations program, if you, either you lived in the city between 1919 and 1969, or you're the descendant of someone who did, and you're black, descendant. you qualify for reparations. Because the argument oh, is, during those 50 years, Evanston, um, instituted a bunch of racist uh, segregationist housing policies that deprive wealth from the black residents of town. Not so they're saying the this is our effort to, to rebuild the wealth that we deprive from you. Whereas Judicial Watch says you haven't proved exactly who was harmed by these policies. And so by opening it up to all black residents, you're discriminated against non-black residents. Well, yeah. And this is really part of a, a larger wave of conservative um, challenges against programs that came up after George Floyd's murder, right? So we're seeing, um, you know, with the last year's Supreme Court yeah, decision in the, affirm in the affirmative action case, that the courts are very weary of these programs that give benefits to certain ethnic groups. Um, and that's coming, that's sort of having a clash with all of these programs, um, both in the government and in private sector, like, I you know, just recently this week, a, a program that was going to give uh, black women in Georgia uh, who were starting businesses grants was struck down by a, an appellate court. So th there's sort of a clash here between, you know, how do we fix our, our age old problems of racial discrimination in a way that that really satisfies a, a, a federal judiciary that's really only interested in race blind policy? Do you think the city will fight this all the way? I mean, what are they vowing to do? Wait, what? They That's they what they're saying. Race blind you know, policy? They, they refuse That's to come for the story of citing pending litigation, but they're saying they vehemently support this program. And they're looking to to fight it all the way up. And, you know, it's a program that they're very proud of. Evanston is very proud of being the first in the nation to institute something like this. But when you're in the first, you know, you open yourself up to challenges that, you know, hopefully, you know, if you're the second or third, you've learned from what, what didn't work um, for the first. The, the, the people are at the center of this who would be the recipients of reparations. Um, what, what are they telling you about this legal fight? Yeah, well, you know, it's already happened. So Evanston's already paid nearly 200 people $25,000 each. So this is something that is already changing lives in Evanston. The question is, for all the people who were, so essentially how it worked is they pulled, um, 
like uh like uh like bingo balls and so if you were later in the the poll you're um you were later in the wait list so uh -huh. there, there's still hundreds of people on this wait list and the question is what it will mean for them it's already changed you know from the people i've, I've talked to it's already i don't know if it's twenty five thousand has changed their lives as much as it felt like a significant acknowledgement to them of of the harm that was really caused here and and across the country by by housing policy for 50 years that you know really deprived black folks for the ability to build wealth in the same way that white folks were able to with programs like the gi bill and such i gotta be real quick with you on this but pause. do you think other communities pause. are watching what happens here before they institute one of their you know own the reparations GI programs is? I Absolutely. This is something that's that it's already here. happening across the country. There are already people the soldiers. trying to institute these programs, and they're going to look to Evanston to see, well, here, what will the courts say here? I mean, we know in California, for instance, they tried to craft a class as they discussed the reparations program that wasn't necessarily race-based, but based on the fact that you were the descendant of a slave or, or a person who was enslaved in the United States. And so maybe maybe the court will be more friendly on something like that. We just we just don't know yet. Okay. I mean, no, what is he talking he about? I think that's it sounds ridiculous. He said they want to race Brian Paul. Yeah, I know that's GI a bad bill. Thing. Why would I listen to you? You're fat and you have bill, no cut. The GI bill was for all veterans that came back from war well. or went to war to get free education, a right to get a house when they come back. So what is he talking he, about? He's not for that, though, bro. bro. I just don't understand. I, I was lie, actually bro. thinking about him being fat and why his voice was so light. Why? Like, how you so big and you so heavy and your voice so light? See, I didn't want to say that. Yeah, that was you weird. a northern boy! Why he said <laughs> a GI You ain't from Sorry. the South! I ain't gonna lie. A lot of people that moves to yeah, Chicago, they, they, they came, they migrated to from the, the south to too. the north. But goddamn, but, I know my people from the south. But it's just crazy. Like he really brought up the GI Bill. My granddad was <laughs> a real life slave. This man, man I don't, but look, actually, bro. my great grandpa was a sharecropper. I'm two, three generations down from a sharecropper. I just can't keep dealing with this victim shit, bro. It's crazy. They, these yeah. people just don't understand, bro. Just look at other countries. Bro. Why not? Just you're not bad. You're just not. If all you gave every nigga in Chicago twenty five thousand dollars. The Bro, crime rate would increase. They are not, in my as, they're not bad off as they. <laughs> they're gonna they buy are. switches that's and chains, and, and they're gonna be it. stealing and robbing for they're each other money. As <laughs> bad off as they think they are. I also, go get some of these people in these other countries and go move them to the hood. I also you know, they're think they're gonna feel like they made. It. I also think already. that I also think that like they instead they, instead they of be, instead of paying them money for what happened back then, why not just give them an opportunity now? You can give them a fish. There's no more racism. Teach them how to fish. There's no more racism in the housing districts, like they said, that deprived y'all of wealth. Now you have opportunity to go get well boom no, they have all solved. the opportunity in the world bro i think the, said, the main the, problem the house, they, they the house judiciary wants a race blind system uh duh I think, up, buddy. I think the main problem vote. like in chicago it. it's probably not a lot of op uh, when i say opportunity jobs that's you know because how's like, the third big city in the that. world and no job or in the u.s and there's no it's, like, it's, it's, it's like third. it's like I don't bro know, but the economy it's right now like a lot of jobs is like it's hard for some people to even start small businesses because a lot of no, resources are expensive to know, get for people, bro. I'm saying no, but I'm pretty sure everybody you that has lived on in the United States has do, better opportunities. Let me say no, but look though, like throughout the history, have had a problem with jobs, money. Not, not just black people. You no, know? I'm like, just now. If you can't get a job, you gotta move. Like people were looking on maps to go to different cities, probably to go get a job somewhere. That's mm -hmm. true. You see what I'm saying? I just don't if, think giving them twenty five thousand. How is giving them twenty five thousand dollars gonna help you get a job? They go live off that. They go live it off, and then they are gonna be in the same position they was just in. And then they want it from the suburb. And then they gonna say the white man oppressed me. We out of here, y'all.